So really, how smart is Vegan Gains? Hey y'all, welcome back to some Food for Thought. So I'm gonna get into the topic of today's discussion in a minute, but before that I thought I'd update you guys on what's just going on here in Detroit and um, generally speaking, just in my life. Uh, so, um, oh, by the way, I don't know if you all have been following um, really, really bad news. The United States has pulled out of the Paris Accord. Um, the Paris Agreement. So um, that basically means that the U.S. isn't really on board with steps that are being taken to move towards a more sustainable uh, and clean planet, right? And, you know, putting restrictions on things like corporations and the amount of pollution that they can do. And um, apparently uh, the United States was the only member of the G20, which is that group of like the, you know, 20 wealthiest nations, um, the United States was the only one to, to jump out of that. And so apparently the rest of the countries in the G20 made a statement kind of speaking out against the United States. So I don't know, I, wanna, I wonder what you guys think about that. People who are in other parts of the world, what are your concerns? What is, uh, you know, does this change your opinion of say Donald Trump? Those of you who are, maybe are supporters of Donald Trump, does this change your opinion of them? You know, what does that all mean in, in you know, terms of things? Also, more uh, news has come out. Apparently now Jared Kushner, Trump's uh, son-in-law, was involved in a meeting with a lawyer who said that they had some information that could affect the election. It was some information, you know, against the Clinton campaign. And apparently a group of people, some of them who were part of the Trump campaign, met with this person. It's a little, it's still, things are still developing and I'm trying to follow that story. I checked, I, you know, I listened in uh, yesterday on Democracy Now! just to get the headlines and I'm gonna listen to that story and, you know, tell you guys and try to keep you posted a little bit on that as things progress. But man, things are going on in the United States, that's for sure, the United States of America. So, all right, so pushing that out of the way, I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, what's happening here at Altspace. So Miles and Kate, who are going to be at res uh, in residence here, working on the project, uh, had a friend who came into town, apparently, to take bicycle polo classes. I don't even know what that is, and I didn't get to see any of it because I was pretty busy uh, the entire time that Sam was here. Well, it turned out that Sam broke his hand. So uh, fortunately, it didn't happen here. I hate to say fortunately, it didn't happen here at Alt Space because I would have been just, I wouldn't be talking about it right now or I would be talking about it and I'd be in tears because I'd hate the idea that someone would be injured while doing any work here at Alt Space. I try to do what I can to make sure that um, working, you know, the, the space is as safe as possible um, even though it's, you know, under construction. But so Sam was was here and he broke his hand, which meant that, you know, his trip ended not the way he expected it to end. He did end up doing some help around the house. In fact, yesterday we pulled down um, the lath and the rest of the lath and plaster in one area of the basement that I'm going to be trying to turn into a wine cellar slash uh, pantry slash tool storage area. Um, there's a tiny little room where like the utility closet is and where, you know, some of the electrical, the, the electric panic uh, panel is and um, panic, I said, um, <laughs> because I get panicky when I think about, you know, working around electricity, which I don't, by the way. I have, um, um, con uh, you know, I contract professionals to work on the electricity and the plumbing because those are things that if they go wrong it's horrendous and you know I've seen you know the example of not having a very good plumber with some of the um, flooding that was going on not that it was the fault of the plumber but it was a plumber who didn't diagnose that that problem might come along fortunately I'm working with an amazing plumber uh, his name is Ken Vallis uh, here in the Detroit area who is amazing and I highly highly recommend him if you're in the Detroit area and you're looking for a plumber contact Ken Vallis. Ken, I am shouting you out right now. Um, anyway, Ken is amazing and he was the person who dealt ultimately with the flooding that was going on in the basement. And as I've said, since then it's been bone dry. And so 
Yesterday, we pulled down the ceiling, started working a little bit with the tiles, but I'm trying to be careful with the tiles because they may contain asbestos. So um, the tiles that just kind of come up by themselves, we're just lifting those off and then wetting it down to see if any of the other tiles come up. And uh, ultimately, we may just end up sealing over everything just to kind of um, make sure that you know nothing no particles are being released into the air and i'm going to show you some video in fact probably once we've done that job that's when i'll do the next walk through so that's what's going on still working on the new draft of ready set go race and i've been having conversations with some folks who are at a venue in brooklyn in the downtown area not very far from the brooklyn academy for music where um ready set go might be remounted very very soon so looking forward to that <sighs> taking an integration breath so now the topic for today's discussion is really um, kind of the authority that is given to certain figures in the, you know, on YouTube, spe uh, specifically talking about folks who, you know, claim to be vegans and how we're constantly being disappointed by them. And, you know, uh, you know, uh, this is an ongoing discussion, obviously, about the fact that, you know, one, um, we're expected to kind of give our attention to certain figures on YouTube, even though they may not be the models of, um, you know, the character, the, you know, the characters that we want them to be, right? So we had, you know, stuff going on with Dorian Ryder, and, um, you know, it was really disappointing. Most recently, and I hate to say this because I really always have my hopes out for, um, um, Charles, who is the vegan cheetah, to really make a turnaround. And, and just when I think he's kind of like opening, um, you know, not opening his mind, I think he's, I think he's a pretty open-minded person, but I feel like the character that he puts on for the vegan cheetah is um, often pretty, you know, despicable, dude. And, you know, I don't want to take it personally because I try to open my heart and show love and support as much as I can for everyone um, and really try to kind of pose questions to people about why they do the things that they do. Um, Charles recently said some pretty heinous things about vegans in general, you know, talking about the mental state of vegans in general. And that's something that happens a lot. And, you know, I've talked about it, you know, don't act crazy. Uh, I'll probably post a link, link somewhere to that video. This idea that, you know, we are, you know, the first thing that we do is we try to categorize someone um, when we, you know, try to attack the character of someone is that we, you know, we challenge their mental state to try to discredit things that they would say. We call them conspiracy theorists. We say that they're crazy. And then um, once we've moved past that stage, we, we quickly move into trying to categorize them as dangerous, you know, maybe moving into calling them things like psychopaths, then um, ultimately comparing them to animals. And before you know it, we are calling people cancer and, you know, basically dehumanizing them to the point where um, we want to see violence done to them. And that might seem like I'm exaggerating, but, um, you know, I've had death threats against me. In fact, and I want to talk about this a little bit, but I received a package recently. It came in a manila envelope and it came from Slovenia. And if you are the person who sent me the package from Slovenia and it actually is something benign that, you know, it's a gift that you're sending me that you want me to open, send me a private message and let me know because otherwise I'm not going to be opening that package. <laughs> um, you know, I, I kind of like peeked and peeled it back a little bit and I saw that there was something wrapped in aluminum foil and I was like, uh, no, I don't think so. So yeah, so you know the potential for people to do harm to other other people who they disagree with first by you know categorizing them as you know mentally unstable, then you know dangerous, and then dehumanizing them ultimately, and uh, you know objectifying them to the point where we can do violence to, to them. Um, in some ways, this has happened to certain classes of people um, in the history of the world. It's something that continues to happen to women and 
specifically, which is why we might potentially see some of the predatory behavior towards them that uh, people at least talk about uh, in terms of some of our other uh, YouTube content creators, right? Um, and let me know if I, if you feel like I'm crossing the line here, please do let me know. So um, the there have been uh, comments from you that are really engaging. I'm really uh, enjoying the discussion. Um, uh, some of it uh, seems to be getting, you know, warm, not necessarily heated, but some of the discussion certainly seems to be getting warm, especially the discussion that was um, specifically around rape culture. And again, I want to give these things the attention, the time, uh, and the thought that they deserve. So one of the things that came up, obviously, in a recent video is I, I was talking about a little bit about vegan gains and the way vegan gains is seen as this somehow as, you know, an intellectual figure in the vegan community. Um, and somebody was pointing out that vegan gains doesn't have a high school diploma, which doesn't necessarily mean anything. People can be self-taught. Um, unfortunately, I don't see vegan gains as someone who has the stamina, the patience to take the time to do a thorough investigation on any subject other than say, you know, veganism, which he seems to be, you know, interested in pursuing to some extent, although I don't know that he necessarily vets any of the information. He may just be finding it and deciding that, okay, these are the credible sources and then sharing that information, which in some ways is the same thing that Unnatural Vegan does, just kind of cites, you know, um, you know what we might call peer-reviewed, pap you know, papers or articles, although I don't know that someone who is lacking in the academic skills that someone like Vegan Gaines, like someone like Vegan Gaines, who, you know, really hasn't, um, you know, not, not finishing high school kind of gives me a sense that he might not have that much of an interest in academic pursuits. Um, it may not be true. He may have just had a terrible experience in high school. I don't know. I don't even know if he really is a high school dropout. He may, you know, be a high school graduate and he may have a master's degree for all I know, but that was something that one of the, um, one of the viewers was talking about. So, uh, I have questions about that. I have questions about why we have given so much, uh, academic authority to someone like Vegan Gaines, who to me hasn't demonstrated really the ability to thoroughly investigate a subject, um, other than say, I don't know, you know, bodybuilding and i don't even know um is he you know i don't is he is he a is he a world famous bodybuilder is he a very highly popular bodybuilder or is he somebody who just criticizes the work of other bodybuilders um he, you know I, he seems to have a a you know he has, he has big shoulders and big arms but i don't know if he is someone who is you know well respected in the world of of bodybuilding so please do let me know but again the question is how is it the, how um how do people uh, decide who they are going to give the authority um, to really see as an intellectual resource or an academic resource uh, on YouTube? And sadly, and I do it too, you know, a lot of the research is just, you know, people Googling things, right? And I hate to say Google because that's uh, branding, right? But they do these internet searches and the first thing that comes up or the first few things that come up, they, you know, share those things back to us. And when, you know, I, one of the things that I've often done is I've gone back and looked at uh, sources that people have cited, and very quickly you can see that they're not sharing the full picture or that the source is not credible because it's a very biased opinion. And so, um, again, this is something that I've seen happening um, again and again with someone like uh, Vegan Gaines. Um, who just doesn't show the, you know, he just doesn't, you know, show the, ah, uh, what do I want to say? He doesn't show the, he doesn't show that he's, you know, very thorough. He doesn't show that he has the patience. He doesn't show that he really takes the time to thoroughly research things. So, you know, we end up getting things from like, you know, info wars. I don't know. I mean, and I'm not, I don't want to shut down, you know, info wars, but they're not the most balanced news source out there and you know i'm not saying that democracy now is the most balanced news source out there um but i do find i do you know um consider them to have a little bit more journalistic integrity than the folks over at Infowars. 
So yeah, there's that. Um, also, you know, another person that people seem to give a lot of, you know, weight to as far as, you know, an intellectual is, you know, Isol Mazard of Bas Le Ciel. And again, there's someone who in my interactions with them has not shown themselves to be very thorough and very thoughtful uh, and very curious, intellectually curious even, to, um, you know, go deep enough to have the kinds of insights that to me are, um, you know, interesting, <laughs> are interesting. So, um, and that's not to say that I'm, I'm the, you know, that I am like the great academic. I don't think I'm academic at all. <laughs> I feel like I'm a, you know, I'm basically a, you know, I'm a, you know, a sitcom actor or whatever, you know what I mean? So I don't, you know, I'm not saying that I'm this person, but I want to question how is it that we get to the place with these individuals that we see them as, uh, you know, the pinnacles of, you know, academic, you know, these academic models, these models of, you know, um, of, of um, academia because I just don't, I just don't see it. And what, uh, what it seems to me is that we just end up with these, you know, people talk about the echo chambers, but if you want to talk about an echo chamber, there's an echo chamber where like you're really, your only authority is like what's spinning around in your own head, like not even being willing to have, you know, just conversations with other people on a, in a casual way. And so then, you know, somebody like Vegan Gaines, who truly, as far as I'm concerned, is like the, the ultimate example of someone who is existing in an echo chamber, so much so that he can have a conversation with a white nationalist and not even seem to realize that the person he's speaking to is a white nationalist, right? When the person is asking him questions about his race and about whether or not he feels like um, it's a good idea for, you know, black people and white people to get together, it doesn't seem to be, you know, dawning on him. And I, and I downloaded that particular video so I can share clips with that if people are interested in hearing um, some of the Tara McCarthy and Vegan Gaines inter interview. It's about an hour long. And so it's pretty, it's pretty really interesting. It's pretty interesting to hear. So again, how is it that we make these decisions about who we want to hold up as models for academia, of models for like, uh, um, uh, uh, for uh, intellectual ex excellence, right? And, you know, I don't think that, you know, I don't think we want to judge it based on someone's IQ. Like, I mean, I don't have the, the biggest IQ. I think the last time I, my IQ was tested, it was like 130, which I don't think is that smart. But it doesn't mean anything because, you know, I didn't do very well in school. Uh, you know what I mean? You know, I have a master's degree, but I don't have a master's degree in anything that would re require me to, you know, you know, I don't, I didn't have to do math or science or anything like that to get my master's degree. So, right. So, so, um, you know, these are just some things that are on my mind. Um, somebody also recently was talking about Camille Paglia, um, who is one of those sort of like guilty, um, sort of like, I hold, um, you know, I, I, I carry some pride uh, about the fact that I studied with Camille Polly. I actually took um, five semesters worth of courses with Camille Paglia when I was an undergrad in Philadelphia because, um, you know, she made the class really interesting. It was, I'd never met someone who, um, was so thrilling to watch as a teacher um, and, you know, was full of idiosyncrasy, idiosyncrasies and a lot of people really hated uh, to be in um, Camille Paglia's class. But I found um, her insights really, really intrigue, intriguing. And although um, Camille Paglia says things that are incredibly sensational and incredibly problematic, um, uh, especially when she says things like, you know, um, transgenderism is this, a sign of the, you know, fall of the, you know, Western society. Things like that are really, really problematic. And, you know, one of the things that I would love to do is um, have a conversation with Camille Paglia. And I think it's something that I can make happen. So let me know if you want me to do the legwork re required to get um, uh, Camille, uh, you know, an interview with Camille Paglia on the channel. Um, I might actually start doing that work today. So yes, what is it that makes someone an intellectual? What is it that makes someone a, you know, uh, a model, an intellectual leader, a thought leader? Um, is it important that we have them? Is it uh, dangerous? 
or at the least problematic that uh, the figures that are being represented as our you know thought leaders are the individuals that they are <sighs> that's a lot so anyway um, my lighting has gone <laughs> the Sun has come up and I've become completely washed out so I hope you guys forgive me for uh, bad lighting um, the bad lighting that has occurred in this video anyway that said that's it for this video like it if you like it share comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourselves. Peace. And I love myself. The world is a ghetto.